And um, if we take a look at a demand of batteries, um, in the last years, we see that we have a dramatically increase, and uh, we can also expect that this increase will continuously go on in the near future. And to cover all this demand for battery storage, um, we definitely need battery technologies with a sufficient energy density, but also on the other side, which are, are based on materials with low costs and easy accessible materials. So in this principle, or in this region, uh, the sodium ion battery gain a lot of interest in our uh, right now hot topic. And with respect to solid state, so in principle, you can say that the solid state sodium batteries is a kind of development or further development of the sodium ion battery. And in principle, what we are doing, we try to replace the liquid electrolyte by a solid electrolyte, which may allow us to uh, increase the energy and uh, power density of batteries. I guess in general, the overall aim in uh, solid state, uh, solid electrolytes is to uh, increase the ionic conductivity of these materials. But also on the other side, uh, there are important parameters like the compatibility with uh, electrode materials like the anode and the cathode material. Um, and with respect to ceramic solid electrolytes, so there's one famous, it's the so-called sodium super ion conductor or in short, nasicon materials. So in principle, the materials are known for more than 40 years, but in the last five to 10 years, they got a yeah, kind of revival by the reinvestigation of the Forschungszentrum Jülich, which were able to uh, increase the ionic conductivity of the material to uh, several milli uh, Siemens per centimeter, which is really good and uh, approaching more or less uh, the ionic conductivity of liquid electrolytes. The main focus is really about the compatibility of a sodium metal anode in a combination with this Nasicon solid electrolytes. And um, on the first part, we uh, really take a look in how or what happened if we really contact these two materials. So um, the main issue is if you contact or try to uh, attach a metal anode to an electrolyte is, that you often find in literature that you've gotten high interface related impedance. So if you measure an impedance spectra, that especially in the low frequency, you see contribution which you can relate to this uh, interface. But it's often not really clear what is really the origin of this interface uh, related resistance. And this could be, for instance, a decomposition reaction, could be a contact loss, but it could also be really the charge transfer, meaning the ionization of a sodium atom and the jump into the solid electrolyte material. And in the second part, we really take a look, uh, okay, what happened at our interface when we really apply an anodic current? So meaning that we really dissolve sodium ions from the, or sodium atoms uh, into the solid electrolyte. And there we really take a look, okay, what happened at the interface? Do we have, let's say, contact loss? How is the morphology of this contact loss? So with respect to the findings, uh, we find that the Nasicon electrolytes really have a good compatibility uh, with the sodium metal anode. So for the degradation, we find, yeah, of course, there is some degradation and we form a stabilized um, solid electrolyte interface, so it's kinetically stabilized, but from an electrochemical point of view, so the increase in resistance of the total cell is comparable small with below two ohms square centimeter. Uh, and we also try to really visualize this um, SEI uh, with, in collaboration with Christian Kübel from uh, the KIT by using cryo -TM. But also there, it was really quite hard to identify uh, a clear SEI structure. So in principle, it seems that we do not observe that huge uh, morphology changes or also structural changes directly at the interface, meaning that our uh, material has a good compatibility. And uh, the reason for this high interface related resistance is not due to some decomposition reaction. Um, and then we carried out further experiments, uh, especially also time, uh, pressure and um, temperature dependent pin spectroscopy. And then we find out that the main issue at this interface is really the contact loss. So that 
few contact materials, you have only a few contact spots, and these uh, result in the so-called current constriction phenomenon, which is more or less just a geometric uh, effect uh, which causes an additional resistance in our total system. So this right now is only under equilibrium conditions, so meaning we do not have any external current load. So uh, in the second part, we really take a look, okay, what happened if we apply an uh, anodic current, meaning we dissolve the, uh, uh, the sodium metal anode. And then we see uh, that we have pore formation, so really that huge gaps between the interface appears. And we also find that the shapes or the geometric form uh, depends on the external load. So for instance, if we have no external load, then we really see nice shaped, uh, nice lens shaped uh, pore structures. But if we apply an external pressure, then uh, our morphology is completely random. And the surprising thing at the end was that we see after we dissolve the anode that the structure is uh, have a really dynamic behavior, so it does not is uh, constant. So, uh, so the pores itself also equilibrate in a certain way. The overall steps with respect to um, uh, sodium solid state batteries is that we need some concepts to. Um, avoid or suppress this pore formation during the anodic dissolution of sodium. This, I guess, is the overall uh, aim. But on the other side, to do so, I, uh, we need a much deeper understanding of this pore formation in a way uh, that we have a feeling about how does this pores form in a geometric way. So for instance, uh, is the shape completely different if we apply higher cone densities or what happened if we apply a larger external load or what is also the temperature dependency. And especially also in this sense, it's also important to uh, have a further study on this equilibration phenomenon. So uh, do pores agglomerate or not? Do they um, collapse and so on? I think these are the, the main points in the near future. <laughs>